As the Palestinian youth movement, we uplift the heroism and bravery of Khalil Awadi, who has been waging his hunger strike for 180 days now. We are also here to speak about the operation of colonialism and imperialism that has created this situation of near death. First, we need to talk about administrative detention. The Zionist policy of administrative detention, as we heard earlier, is used by the Zionist state as a way to indefinitely renew prison sentences without any trial or charge. This means that Zionists can abduct Palestinians from their homes and then lock them up in their cages for six months with no trial and with no charge. Once that period is over, they can renew the sentence indefinitely. It is a barbaric policy that perpetuates colonial violence and strips Palestinians of their freedom, of their right to life, and their right to resist. In addition to our heroic Khalil, currently 650 other Palestinians are in prison through the policy of administrative detention. We want to highlight that this policy seeks, first and foremost, to weaken Palestinian resistance. On the level of the individual, in order to weaken the collective, while the Zionists attempt to criminalize our people through the legitimate prison regime, we know the truth of the Zionist schemes. This policy of administrative detention is only an attempt to crush Palestinian resistance, which is a force that continues to threaten the legitimacy of the Zionist colonial project and is our path towards liberation. It's also important to note that this policy wasn't just developed by the Zionist state. Who here knows? Anyone? Well, it was created by the British imperialist regime that occupied Palestine for almost 30 years. During their occupation, the British dispossessed Palestinians and helped to facilitate the mass settlement of Zionists on Palestinian land for the creation of the racist, exclusivist, ethno-nationalist Zionist state that exists to this day and goes by the name Israel, in quotation marks. In order for the British to help build the Zionist state, they used mass detention against Palestinians. The British adopted this law in order to punish Palestinian resistance and specifically to try to squash the Arab revolt, which was the biggest anti-colonial revolution in the 30s, led by the Palestinian peasants who were fighting for national liberation from Zionist occupation, sorry, British occupation and Zionist colonialism. So we make this important note not to diminish the responsibility that the Israeli state holds. On the contrary, Zionist pigs are every bit responsible for the genocide of Palestinians. But it's important to remember that Zionism is a product and a force of imperialism and continues to wage its death project with the unconditional support of Western imperialism. We must understand that the brutal situation being imposed on Khalid Awadi today cannot be isolated as a one-time or one-time or individual situation. The brutal Zionist policy that Khalid is protesting is a result of over a hundred years of violations, imprisonments, colonial fascism, and theft. When we demand the immediate release of Khalid, we are also demanding freedom for all our people who remain imprisoned by the regime of sheer brutality and injustice. When we shed light when we shed light on the intolerable situation being imposed on Khalil, we are also shedding light on the intolerable situation being imposed on all Palestinians who are fighting the Zionist enemy. Khalil, like all our prisoners, remains on the front lines of the Palestinian struggle. Khalil, like all our prisoners, is our guiding force because he continues to confront the enemy and expose to the world that the Zionist regime is based on nothing but brutality and depravity. We reject all attempts to criminalize our resistance that we uphold by any means necessary. Glory to our martyrs, freedom to our prisoners, and long live the resistance.
He could die at any moment. He's denied access to his family. He's denied access to his lawyers. And like I said, it's indefinitely renewable, so we do not know if or when they will ever release him. Currently, he has lost nearly 100 pounds and he is unable to move or see. He is one of nearly 650 Palestinians and administrative, and administrative detainees and one of 4,700 total Palestinian prisoners in, in Israeli occupation jails. We fight for our prisoners because we need them to know that we will not forget them. We will not let them suffer and die in these jails. Whether we're in New York or anywhere in the world, we will not let them forget that we are here and we will not be quiet. So free
Anti-Semitic. 
begin with. Because there are countless Jewish people who do not support the genocide of the Palestinian people, who don't want that being done in their name. So when you tell someone that they're anti-Semitic for being anti-Zionist, what you're actually saying is that every Jewish person around the world should be guilty for Israel's crimes. And that's something that many Jewish people, including the people here have rejected and have made clear time and time again that the Zionist entity does not speak in their name. I forgot to introduce myself in the beginning. My name is Nardin Kiswani. I'm with Within Our Lifetime, United for Palestine. And we call ourselves Within Our Lifetime because we believe that Palestinian liberation must and will be achieved during our lifetime. It's not something in the distant future. It's not a dream that we are just gonna tell our kids. It's something that we are gonna breathe and live and fight for every single day until we realize our aspiration of a liberated homeland. And just like we won't wait for Palestine to be free, we won't wait for Khalid to be free. We cannot wait until he is martyred, until he becomes another And this can't be the only time that we do it. So when you go home, when you go back to school, if you have these posters with you, the safe freedom, all these small posters, take them, post them up at your university. Hold events, hold protests in your university. Every single university in New York City is complicit in Zionism. It's complicit with the genocide of the Palestinian people. And they don't teach us about the history of settler colonialism in Palestine. This is why it's on us to educate people. This is why we hold protests like this around the world. But oftentimes, Palestinian prisoners are the most forgotten, most marginalized, most sidelined people in society. Their voices are not uplifted. So many of us heard about when Palestinian organizations were raided, or we hear about Palestine when it's on the headlines. But why did it take 180 days for Khalid to be on hunger strike for the world to start noticing? This is why we have to fight for Palestinian prisoners every single day and not wait for them to be martyred or not wait for it to be such a dire situation. And it's on us to educate others because just like we're not educated on the history of colonialism in Palestine, we're not taught the history of colonialism around the world and even in this country, at least in public school. I know in some universities, they'll teach it now while they're gentrifying and while they continue to build on indigenous land and build um, in oppressed communities. They may teach us this, but they don't teach us about the history of colonialism in Palestine and so many places around the world that have expressed solidarity um, with Palestine. So I'm gonna have uh, my comrade come up here and speak about that in the context of Nigeria and Palestine. Hey everyone, my name is Adir Sola and I just want to let y'all know when I first learned about the Palestinian struggle, I was 18, just graduated high school that year, and it was 2020. And I think the nature of colonialism is so that we are so entrenched in these ideas of what it means for a country to be ruled by another that we don't understand how deeply entrenched it is until we have to unlearn it. That propaganda has to be unlearned. It has to be uprooted so that we can fully understand how to stand in solidarity. So standing in solidarity with the struggle and learning the truth to dismantle the lies. I want to ask y'all, do you think you can hug a strike for 180 days? Any of y'all? No. That's since December, Khalid has been hunger striking. No food. None at all. And there's an open air prison that lives inside the land, separating the people of Palestine. Just like how there was a wall separating people in Germany, the Berlin Wall, we are living that history right now today. And I really think that that awareness is something that is missing. Because not only are Palestinians right now 
dying from that lack of awareness. But so many people, when we were standing right here, somebody walked by and said, long live Israel. The level of ignorance, the level of nonchalance, there's so many things that come for a person to get to that point, to not even understand that children are dying, families are being separated, and they are struggling. And that West Bank barrier wall is a separation barrier built by the settler state Israel. It separates the West Bank, and it does not allow Palestinians to have freedom in their own indigenous lands. We have to be discussing this within the global diaspora, because just as Palestine was colonized by the British, Nigeria, my mother country, was colonized by the British. And understanding that bridge right there is how we see the connections. As a diaspora, our awareness saves lives because the system is counting on us to not care. They don't want us to give a damn, but we have to care. Because if you don't think you can hunger strike for 180 days, imagine what Khalid is going through right now. That is strength. And that divinity, whether you see it as God, Allah, or the universe, that is what's holding him. And we have to stand and pray and continue to speak up about this because so many people that work in the system are counting on us to not give a damn. Nigerian Palestinians and Jews of color are dis discriminated against whether they're black or brown. Judaism and Zionism cannot stand hand in hand. It's just like repeating the crimes of Nazi Germany in World War II. That is what we're living through right now. Because just as we stand here, back then, people weren't giving a damn. Our solidarity is so important because it will push the accountability forward. Right now, Germany is wheeling Nazis in their, in their deathbeds to jails to hold them accountable for their crimes. So I pray that within our lifetime, all of the Zionists, who are pushing this narrative of isolation and destroying the nation of Palestine are held accountable. And that's what you get, stand in solidarity. Be a big stepper for Palestine.
his wisdom that I may convey his message and so inshallah sanctify his name and bring peace to the world. Greetings to everybody, assalamu alaikum and greetings to Khalil, I hope he hears us. The message gets through to him. He's still in prison, starving, but God should help. He give him strength and he should hear our message and know that the we people are eating around the world. We are giving him the strength with God's help that he should continue and call out to the world this terrible crime of Zionism. We want you to know it happens to be in our history, as everybody knows, there was the Holocaust, Jews were murdered. Tomorrow is the anniversary, the day of one of our great rabbis who was shot and then gave, I believe, by the Nazis, his name was Shechayi Rabbi. he was a great holy rabbi. And I have here somebody who just told me the story, one of the young rabbis, a gifted rabbi. His grandfather, who I personally knew, he was told when the Zionists came into their community, this great rabbi called him over, a young, a young student, and he said to him, go out there and destroy what they're, what they're, they're gathering
can struggle and fight for them from wherever we are with wherever we have. So I need you to be as loud as possible. Free Helen! Free Helen! Free them all! Free them all! Zion is a must fall! Zion is a must fall! Free Helen! Free Helen! Free them all! Free them all! Just like many other Palestinians 
are currently under administrative detention. So when we honor our martyrs and fight for our prisoners, that means fighting to dismantle the genocidal entity that murdered me, that stole her body for 432 days and then laughed about it. In May's memory, we carry on the struggle for Palestinian liberation by any means necessary. And with the hope that Khalid will achieve liberation and that all of Palestine will achieve liberation, we continue to fight for the dismantlement of Zionism from the river to the sea, from Haifa to Jerusalem, from the West Bank to Gaza, and from the Naqab to the north.